going on everybody and thanks for joining me again. This is the super special episode. We are out of the studio and we've traveled the multiple miles to come to the capital of the greatest country in the world. We are in Washington DC to be bestowed upon all of us the greatest guest we could have asked for. <laughs> Andre, thank you, one, for allowing Zach and I to come and join you in DC for the weekend, but also coming onto the podcast and finally bringing us your presence, bestowing upon us your presence. I'm so excited. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. So we've got Andre Lackey and Zach Strutzinger. We've had before. Zach, thank you again for also joining us. Zach really didn't have a choice. He was here for the trip and we just kind of roped him into it. So (laughs) thank you. I'm here. He's here. All right. And make sure you speak up so these people can hear you because I'm watching. All right. So we've got one article chosen for the day and then I have a funny little law case law that I want to run past Andre happened in Cincinnati, Ohio. And then, um, again, I got a couple TikToks that I have chosen for us to wrap up the episode. So we're going to get moving here, move it a little quick. This might be a little bit of a shorter podcast. We'll see how it goes. But the article that we have chosen for today from Yahoo News, I don't know where this came from. I mean, I didn't wake up today. Oh, you know what we should do? I'm sorry. We got to mute the so TV. I to interrupt you, but I was like, let me not mess up your Hey, flow. we're fine. I heard the TV in the back. I was like, oh, I, as soon as I went to go talk, I was like, oh. <laughs> I'm sure we're not picking it up, but... Just in case. It's going to be like that annoying, like... Perfect. Thank you. Um, oh, yeah. I need a countdown next time. Now. I, I didn't even think about it. I, I did like... not even think about it, but I'm sure we just came in so smooth you can't even notice it. But anyway, um, the, the article that we have today, again, came out of nowhere. I just logged in and see what the news for the day is, and... I don't know what compelled good old William to come out and say it, but Bill Clinton says Lewinsky affair was to manage anxieties. So again, article in the bio or in the description, but this is the article. Bill Clinton said he had an affair with Monica Lewinsky to help him deal with the stress of being president as he opened up in a documentary released Friday about the scandal that led to this impeachment. How wild. Now, the really curious thing is, does any legal, any kind of like legal reprimand follow this? Because you were being, the real question is, what if it comes out after Trump's presidency that he did truly collude? Is there criminal offenses that can apply to an ex-president that follow their presidency? Because you were impeached for this. They couldn't prove you slept with Monica, so they let you finish your term, but now you're coming out and saying you did commit adultery, so where, where are we left? Like, is this OJ? Is this OJ? He did his time, and now he gets to say, yeah, I diced her neck wide open, yeah. you know? So, it's wild. So If I did it. If it, I did it. it. Yeah, he writes a book that said, if I did it. Mm. Um, so he said that it had been motivated by life's pressure Pressures and disappointments and terrors, fears of whatever. And he said that he felt terrible that the affair had defined Lewinsky's life. How crazy. I, my one question is like why – like I understand the whole impeachment thing just happened. So like it's like relevant information kind of but like – not about you. Right. So it's like, why do you feel the need to then like be like, oh, like I was impeached for cheating, but like I cheated because like, first of all, Hillary doesn't care. She doesn't want to hear about this anymore. Like Monica Lewinsky doesn't want to hear about this anymore. And also like no one that's relevant to Trump's impeachment is going to see this as being like, oh yeah, they went through the same sort of thing. It's like, no, like what you did was completely different. So like, I just don't understand why... He's bringing this up now. It of. is so random. Yeah. I, like, why now of all times? And to further your point, you could have taken this to your grave, guy. Yeah. You, you literally could have taken this to your grave. Your mm-hmm. wife, we all know your wife knows. Hillary doesn't care about his anxiety. She does, exactly. That's the thing. And, like, anxiety is, like, super, that's a valid thing. That's, like, a reason that people do certain things. However, it also can't be applied to situations like this and seen as an excuse. Thank because, you. like, at the end of the day, he still cheated. Yeah. He still impeached. We can say he was impeached because he was anxious. Plus, it was, plus it was the nineties. No one cared about anxiety back then. Oh, yeah. yeah. uh, facts. It, that's why he knows he can play this card. Is now we're all sensitive and anxious that anxiety is a real excuse. The the curious thing that I have playing off of Andre's point is. Let's just let's just push his logic a little bit. Mm-hmm. All right, his logic is excuse this act. 
because of the pressures and anxieties of being president. Okay. Now, my real question is to let's just follow the logic. If the logic is anxiety and stress is alleviated by sexual interactions, Mm -hmm. does that really excuse adultery or shouldn't that be your wife's job? Like if, if you're having anxiety and the way to relieve it is a BJ in the Oval Office, then my real question is what excuses you going to your 18 year old or 16 year old, um, intern mm. and not going to your thousand year old dinosaur wife yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I just feel like it's like for Hillary I would be very disappointed in him because it's like you guys have like been through this like you guys yes. have talked about it it's been all over the news like why are you bringing this up again it's like you had anxiety like you, you very well might have had anxiety like that's fine why are we still talking about it? Like, why are you bringing it up? Why is it on Yahoo? And again, I, I maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like this statement or an article like this, the person who comes out looking the worst, right? It definitely isn't Monica. This is a young child that was taken advantage of. Mm-hmm. And it really isn't Bill because he's still he's, – you get, are still called Mr. Pr- – he's still got a bad look. Trust yeah, me. I but I think so. the person that comes out the worst – is Hillary because Hillary is commonly criticized for, you know, feminist movements and everything. Mm-hmm. She turned her back on the fellow woman and just criminalized this poor girl because it was a self-defense. I'm not saying Hillary had no choice. Mm-hmm. She had to put to to save her own reputation, she had to put this girl on blast. Mm-hmm. But she's been ca- criticized at least in 2015 when she was real running for re-election and stuff like or go, running for election. Um her, one of the biggest criticisms was like, how can you call yourself a feminist when you spent all that time tearing down Monica and everything and blah, blah. And Monica Lewinsky in her closet right now still to this day says she has that dress with his cum stain on it. And that in itself is disgusting and creepy. Like her court case is, was done. Like we're, we're done. I don't know why she's saving the Well, you want to, because they didn't do a DNA test. They wouldn't do it. They didn't have the technology. But she said that it was him. Right. And he said that it was her, so. Wait, but he said it was her on, what did it say, March 6th. Yeah, but it was never, it was never anybody else. You're right. You're right. Like, it wasn't toothpaste. (laughs) Like, who who else was it, you know? (laughs) It wasn't toothpaste. I don't know. I feel like, at least for... Hillary, it also kind of makes her... like, And I do agree that, like, as far as, like, Bill, Bill's going to look bad because obviously he was the bad guy, blah, 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 blah. But he'll always be Mr. President. Right. Monica Lewinsky, she's the victim. She's not even... I don't think she's made a comment on this yet. But, like, no, as far yeah. as Hillary, it's like, yes, she's a feminist. Yes, she not only, like, attacked Monica Lewinsky, but, like, also Defended. stayed... Defended. Also stayed with someone who is obviously not treating her right as a woman... You're 100% and right. And coming from the feminist perspective, I would think that she would want to sort of like purport wanting better for yourself. And for Bill to bring this up now, it's kind of just reminding everybody, it's like, yeah, but she's still here. She still stayed. Boom. So I feel like that's kind of like a double blow for her. And that's know? what I feel like. And the, the more unfortunate thing is low key, you know, she wasn't going to run for election again, but you know, she wasn't going to forego trying. And so I, I bet you in the back of her head, she was hoping all these dominoes fell so then she could try to weasel her way back in. But this, I think alone, seals any possibility of you ever coming back. Maybe I'm wrong. I feel like especially because she lost to Trump and especially because she did, technically she did win the popular vote, correct? Right. That it's like after doing that and after knowing that you put so much effort into that... Technically won, but still didn't get the position that you were, I would say, rightfully owed. I would be over it. Like, obviously, like, if they don't want this, like, I'm good. Like, they obviously don't want something that's going to work for them. They chose this man who's done what he's done. But <laughs> I would be like, obviously, the American people aren't ready for me. So, like, I, I would wipe my hands of it. So, I don't even know if she was but necessarily see, Andre, ready. that's you. Yeah. We I gotta, would not be ready to You run. got, okay, so... Joe Rogan, right? I listen to him all the time. I've quoted him way too... I've annoyed the hell out of you my entire relationship with you, always <laughs> quoting him. Yeah. But everybody in the world is like, dude, you should run for president. Mm-hmm. And the thing he always says is, I would never want to run for president. And I think the type of people that want to be a president is a type of psychopathy that is dangerous. Like, for you to even want that is a type of breed that, like... You're such an egoist and and self-absorbed that, like, you're a dangerous type of human to begin with. And so 
you would be turned off by this. Listen, there's girls, I, you know, take you out on an amazing date. We have an amazing time. It's amazing. But if you're not hitting me back up or it's tough to communicate with you, same thing. It's like, listen, I tried. I put in my effort. I'll pick, I'm, I'm picking up the hints. It's over. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. Any person in their right mind would be like, listen, I, I know I deserve this and I didn't get it. So I'm above it. Yeah. But it also exactly. seems like that she's a psychopath. Mm-hmm. Like she, uh, SNL did it perfectly. Kate McKinnon played her, and she said, oh, I wasn't born yesterday. I was born 67 years ago, and I have been planning on being president ever since. Like, Hillary's entire life goal was to be president. And back to the Monica Lewinsky thing. The fact that you're... Do you know what, in my life, maybe it's just me because I lived in a family that took their relationship serious and family came first. But for me, there's nothing more important than the person who's going to be my other half. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at somebody like Hillary, who was willing to put all of that on the back burner, that this relationship isn't real, that this is a facade, we're putting on a show for America, you get to screw who you want, I'm probably screwing who I want, and it's all a facade. The fact that the relationship took the back burner Mm -hmm. tells me that none of, the only thing that matters to you, more than love, more than family, is being president. I feel like from her coming from like the background that she came in, obviously she came from like a well-off background, very intelligent, all that stuff. I think it would be very interesting to actually see, like, I don't know if she said it before, but like, did she actually think when she was younger, like, I want to be president? Like, was that ever? You're like, right. I don't know. Mindset? I don't know. Because I could see her being like, I want to have like power. I want to be, I know I want to be wealthy. You know, I want to be like well-off. But like president is such a very like male dominated thing. Like, I feel like maybe like. Although it shouldn't be. I feel like, like, I don't even know if, like, her mindset was there to think that she could get there. That's a fair point. But she also strikes me as a type where I'll be the first. Like, you know, where it's not like, like, yo, her whole thing was break the glass ceiling. To Mm -hmm. her, it was, like, nothing was unobtainable because she did so well. She went, she was one of the first females to go to the Ivy League school she went to. She was groundbreaking everywhere she, like, all the steps in her life. And I think that only fuels your drive to be more ground, yeah. to break more ceilings. And you're probably right initially. And that's the unfortunate thing is it is unfortunate. And I really hope it didn't happen, yeah. but it is unfortunate. If my sister grew up in a world where it's all male presidents, it's only been male presidents. If that deters her from ever wanting it, because mm-hmm. here was the thing when we were voting last time and I didn't vote for Hillary, it wasn't because I didn't want a female president. It was because I personally believed that she was not the right female. We're a tribe of 350 million. I think the right females there it just isn't her yeah, so the unfortunate it. thing and I'm you're, you're really I don't know highlighting it for me putting a beacon on it and it makes me worrisome I really hope that didn't ever blockade my my sister went into medicine mm-hmm. but but is it because that's what she truly wanted or is it because she felt these other doors were closed for her that's really that, that's petrifying to me because she's also, smarter than me and yeah, more yeah. successful than me. Well, so, just like you're saying, I feel like it could also be like maybe she got into that field because – and I like – I have no idea. Right. <laughs> she got Boom. into that field maybe because like she was trying to say like she could just be as competitive and at that level as whatever the doctor, like male, female, whatever. So I feel like maybe Hillary was coming from that point of view. You're right. Maybe. You're right. Zach, what do you think? Uh, it's over my head. I don't know. <laughs> they can't hear you, dude. The whole thing, like, I don't know, the whole thing that I was thinking, like, as you're talking, you're like, you're just saying stuff about him coming out now. Like, the whole thing to me that's, like, pertinent about this is, like, the fact that you read documentaries. So, when I watch a lot of documentaries, there's always, like, here's a documentary for this band from 1990, and here's the documentary for this band in 1995 and 2000. They're going to be willing to say more things as time goes on. So, I, this isn't Bill, or this isn't Bill Clinton saying, coming on the news, releasing a statement. This is someone questioning Bill Clinton in a closed room. So I think yeah. the results you get are a little different than, you know, I think this is what I need to tell the people this day. So it's not a gut call. It's like if you even seen, like, there's the Robert Durst documentary. He goes in the bathroom. He's on hot mic. He goes, I did it. They got me. Like, it, I think, I don't know if this is what happened, but there's a part wow. of my mind that goes, did he actually mean to say this? 
He's getting wow. older in age. I feel and, like, like I feel I like know. thirty years. He, boom. I was about Thank to say you. I feel like the time has definitely made him not like softer, but it's definitely made him a little bit more like malleable and a little bit more senile. I, mean, like, yeah. I feel like that's what I'm saying. Like maybe point. the senile's there. He's like I don't care anymore. But I it's also know. like a thing. It's like we all. It's synonymous. Bill Clinton, Monica Lewinsky. They had an affair. Mm-hmm. Come on the dress, like blue <laughs> dress, like. We know all these things, so, like, for him to, like, come out now and say something is, like, not anything groundbreaking, it's kind of just him, like, being, like, yeah, I did it, and here's why, but, like, I feel like, at least me being just, like, the person that has, like, obviously, I wasn't alive during that time, but just, like, knowing the history, like, I don't really care why he did it, like, he <laughs> did it, like, he did it, it was, he did it, just it was thank a, you for saying well, you did it, did it yeah, he did no, it, that's why, like, I'm agreeing judgment. with you, it's more of, like, an under the rug thing, yeah. like, I don't care, this isn't gonna affect the way I but live. it's fucked up like, for Hillary, because, yeah. like, yeah. at this point, especially now that they're older, well, yeah. used to be like, yeah, like, maybe I should stop talking about this, well, okay, maybe <laughs> this is a hypothetical analogy that could be real, I don't know, but before the podcast, Mike Pence was on the TV, and we were making jokes that the dude's a closet case, now, imagine in your life, your entire, he is, Imagine your life is telling everybody I'm a Bible thumper and men and women are supposed to be in a marriage, blah, 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 blah. Well, if you're gay and you spend your entire life doing this charade, what possesses you to just, like you said, 30 years goes by, or for us, we're, it is 2020, so we're literally approaching 30 mm-hmm. years. How do you have a secret suppressed for almost 30 years and then just go... Well, I mean, now's the time. Like, it just feels like that it's such an exercise. Every day you have to repeat, no, 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 I did not sleep with her. Or no, 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 I didn't get a blow job in the Oval well, Office. And then... He did wind up saying that he did have, like, he, he's, I know he says that he really? never had Really? See, that's the thing. I didn't know. I, I, I thought like until this point he's was, been denying There was some admitting to that. Because originally uh, he said, like, I did not have sex for a yeah. There has it been. Was a degree. He it's, was, not, it's not like, yes. It's yes. like... Kind he, of, okay. he, made, he made it very flowery because initially he said, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. But like, that's not how he got impeached. He definitely got impeached because it was confirmed. Right. You know? And the whole trial went through. So like, we all know what happened. We don't need him to be like, yeah, I did it. Like, we know. <laughs> We've known for 30 years. Like, Hillary knows. The press knows. Like, we all know. So for him to do this, like, feels unprovoked. And it feels kind of like weird because it's kind of like, I don't want to say that he's just trying to get like in the media spotlight because I don't see like, I'm trying to see like why. Like, no, no, no. Why? But I think it like, comes back to reason? Zach's point. I, this whole time I've been with you. Mm-hmm. Why now? And, but, but I think Zach nailed it. It's a documentary. He didn't, he didn't have the foresight of, I think it'd be different if he had a press conference and was like, all right, guys, I'm admitting to the American public. It's time. But like you said, it's going to be a closed room. It's him and one other person. He's probably like, listen, I did it. And it, it happened because I was anxious and the presidency was getting to me. More, AKA, I wasn't getting it at home and I was losing my mind. And, and I, I think it's another it. thing like, get off my back. This is past. Like, this is something easy. No one, who was asking him about it? Well, well, <laughs> it's it's, it's, it's you know? documentary. That's what I'm saying. So uh, someone's asking him. Someone yeah. is asking him is asking the him, question. Yeah. So I think this is more of like, this is an easy, like, scapegoat type answer. Like, you know, it's not my problem. I feel like I would have a lot more respect for him. Is like, if we're going to do a documentary about you and your, you as an entire person, like, we know about the affair. How about we look about, like, your early beginnings? Like, your whole presidency, like, besides, like, where it kind of, like, got, like, iffy. Like, you could touch on it, but I feel like for you to, like, rehash and be like, I did it because. Oh, yeah. Kind of adds, like, a different spin on it. So now, like, Hillary's like, oh, like... He was anxious, so that's an excuse. So now it becomes more of like a, kind of like a double-edged sword. It's like, yes, he's providing answers, but like, it's really like more so like damaging. Like, Well, yeah, that's the other problem with like documentaries like this. They're going to dig until they get the answer they want. Maybe not the right answer, but that's, that's good. good. It's a new story. And so, I'm going to go watch this documentary yeah. just so I can watch Bill Clinton say that he did it because he was anxious. That's a good point, too. Yeah. But I think, Andre, you, you raise a really good point. The unfortunate thing is while you, you say, I wish the documentary was your life. I want, I want to divulge into all of it. You yeah. got to remember who we're talking about. We're not talking about LeBron James. We're not talking about Michael Jordan. We're not talking about, I don't know, name it. We are talking about probably, I'm going to provoke some of you, but we're probably talking about the leaders of the Illuminati, right? The people who are running the back door, the the guy, the Wizard of Oz that's behind the curtain, <laughs> and they ain't going to tell us what they're doing. When you look at their relationship and back to love and everything else and how I see family and how I see love, they don't have that. And when you, what we do know about their relationship was 
They got to get, they were the top of their class. They got together when they were in the same college at the same Ivy League school. And you, again, this is, this is me projecting onto somebody, so I can't speak of it as a fact, but their relationship has read to me nothing more than a business deal. Strategy. We need each other to conquer the world. And that's why love, family, everything else can go on the back burner because our priority right now is this business deal. Yes, there's a sexual element. Yes, we have a family. We have a daughter. There's a familial relationship we share. But for the most part, it's a business deal. Like I got together with you at the beginning of the dawn of time in college because we saw that we were going to do something. We were going to conquer things and we'd be able to conquer more if we did it together. So I say all of that because it feels like while we want that documentary that's going to give us the background, you know, we, we know that he grew up in down south and never, but, <laughs> but we really don't know much about it. We don't know much about his family, and he definitely had roots in, in um, you know, connections mm -hmm. with very powerful people. Mm -hmm. That reads, you know, when you're dating a girl in college, she notices the connections you have, and you notice the connections she has, and you also know you're both going to be at the top of your class. So to me, too much of it feels like a deal, mm -hmm. and that's why I feel like we're never going to get that the documentary we truly want. It's going to be the charade of, oh, yeah, I slept with a 16-year-old or whatever. Like, it's all going to be these rant like the things that we already know that mm -hmm. we're going to see the wizard's head, but we're never going to see behind that curtain. Yeah. And that's the unfortunate part. I just don't see like, just stop talking about her. <laughs> I just feel like at the, like at the, like you could talk, like have them ask you questions about anything else, but like, this is a topic that you've addressed. Like it's been addressed like ad nauseum at this point. So it's like, why are you like, why are you, why do you even sign off to be like, okay, like, yeah, we could talk about Monica. It's like, no, we're like, we all know that. Like, let's like, we could skip over it. Not to know? mention, even, even a For further, to sign. I want to further your point even more. So when you keep saying, hey, this is something we already knew. You know, we, we, we've already had this discussion. You keep bring, like you've said it as well. This is something we already know. Why do we already know? How is it something that's already indoctrinated in our society? Because, dude, this happened in what? Early 90s, 93, and we were just born. Now we're growing up in the late 90s, early 2000s. Every rap song and every song we listened to in the mainstream media talked about Monica getting Lewinsky. Monica Lewinsky and, uh, <laughs> you know, that, <laughs> got that Molly and that whiskey, that Monica Lewinsky. That, like, it's, it's ingrained in us. It is. And so it became so socialized. Now, no, you pick a song that came out in the past five years that talks about Monica Lewinsky. Yeah. It's a dead issue. It's, mm -hmm. it's been so instilled in us at the dead dawn of time that now it's old news and we're yeah. done. This is over. It's dead. The only person this is truly affecting on a grand scale every day is poor Monica. Everybody else has moved on. And, and, and Hillary. Cause yeah. this, is, this, is not, this is not good for Hillary. That's Facts. why I don't understand why he would just like keep on... Why him, she let him, him? Him signing off on it, her letting him, but him signing off on doing a documentary like this where he know like you can't tell me he didn't know what questions were going to be asked. You know that's the main question anyone's going to yeah. ask. Yeah, so. but like I just wouldn't personally for me like if I cared about my spouse like you're saying they have a very like business like relationship. Even if you're trying to like do that front and like have this be like a fake thing, I probably wouldn't do that. You yes, know? that's why like I'm trying to understand like okay so like if they are that business minded. Where does this come into play? I like, think a lot of it was be, like kind of like know. you guys were saying earlier, like it's like the coattails of Trump. Like this happened to Trump, I could maybe get some relevancy again because of what recently but happened. Why does he news. need it? Like, he doesn't. He no, but I think well, it tarnishes. What, what, what has we heard about him? What have we heard from him? It's all his wife, his wife, his wife. Maybe he's like, I want to be I need again. some I mean, kind sure. of relevancy. I guess, but so. he's rich, so like just stay and rich. And like, I want to, yeah. I want to further Zach's point. This might be a ploy, not a ploy, but it. I think this casts more doubt into more Americans' heads about Trump's innocence. Because here we go, we got a president, he was the second president to ever be impeached, and he was not removed from office, he was proven innocent, and here he is years later going, yeah, I was guilty, whatever, I, we did it in the Oval Office. So I think to Zach's point, maybe this is to cast doubt in more Stir Americans' head that Here's Trump. He was impeached. He wasn't removed. They say he wasn't removed. You know, some of the some of the narrative is he wasn't removed because it was a Republican dominated Senate. So are we going to have Trump coming out in a documentary 10 years, 20 years from now saying, yeah, I did it. I, I you know, but whatever. 
So do you think? So do you think Bill Clinton in that in that situation? Do you think he's more pro Trump or anti? Do you think? Oh, anti. Oh no, it's turning the pot. I think, I mean, I think, that's I think it's, it's to like, cast on to Trump. Like, like he I got was away with too. it. Yeah, like he got away with it, but like he shouldn't have because I shouldn't have. Mm-hmm. And I think that's kind of what he's getting at. That's a good I point. I feel like in this situation, it's because it's so. At least for me, like from what I've seen on the news, obviously I'm not like a politician, or whatever. But like. From what I've seen on the news, it seems like a very black and white situation. Whether you're a Democrat, Republican, Independent, blah, 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 whatever. He said what he said. We have the recordings. We have the transcripts. And, like, to me, it was very obvious that he was trying to do something that was some sort of, like, agreement, like, a barter, some sort of, like, give and take right. for information on an American citizen. Yeah, now he's going to be your nominee, so... Yeah, so... <laughs> and exactly. So, like, at the end of the day, like, one plus one equals two. Like, what he did was he, President Trump, went to a foreign person and tried to get information on someone that's domestic. So I feel like if you're just looking at the very bare bones facts of it, you can't, like, deny that, like, what he did was what he did and, like, I think what he did was wrong... Obviously, it's very much up for a debate because, like, a lot of people, like, don't agree and they don't think that it's an impeachable offense, but I feel like any time that you're just, like, I keep hey on Hey, man, the any- law is a law. You went to law school, yeah. you went to law school. The rule is this. Yeah. Do the facts apply? Mm-hmm. I 100% agree with you there. Yeah. Um, and, and again, the, the Trump's impeachment was turned into such a circus. Nobody wanted to, you know, I remember sitting with my mom and my sister. We were in Florida. It was just a family day. We're watching the the debates to to lead into impeachment. Mm-hmm. And it's the thing that upset me the most is you wish somebody would go, guys, all of us are here in one place. That doesn't happen often enough. We are all here. Why doesn't anybody want to talk about the facts and, and the fact of the matter? We were all – the amount of wasted time of people come sen- – a senator would – or a, oh, sorry, a representative would come up and they'd go, I am here uh, – I, I stand for impeachment because when my granddaughter asks where I was, I want to say I was on the right side of the law. That's what their conversation it, – it's, it's like that's cute, that's adorable, that's awesome – those are the words I don't need right now. Mm-hmm. You have two minutes to speak, and you spend two minutes talking about your grandchild. Yeah. I'm disgusted. Let's talk about the f- – and and then you had the Republicans going, it's not – again, I, again, this is the lawyer in me. I'm watching this thing go, why can't anybody just say the rule? What is the rule that we're trying to say he violated? Yeah. And then why can't we talk about the facts? Yes, because what actually happened. And it was just a circus. We wasted time, everything. So that's why I'm kind of like, Zach's point makes me feel like there. everybody knows this impeachment charade that just went down was a waste of time and was a total circus that got to no, – it, it, it accomplished nothing. Mm-hmm. So I feel like this is to cast doubt on the impeachment system, that it isn't holding presidents accountable. That's, That's a fair point. Um, again, fun thing to consider. One last question I got for you because we have talked – we kind of exhausted this. But I am curious, Andre and Zach, do you think – because – you know, at the DNC, you know the classic video. Hopefully I can find it because I want to put it on here. But the classic video of Bill with the balloons just like, oh, oh, like he was like brain dead. He is literally a shell of the man he used to be. So my question is, do you think he needed to get permission from Hillary to be able to say this? Did he just say it as a dope? Like, listen, I did it and I did it because I was stressed. Or... Or or did he go, you know, is it okay that I finally say that, you know, and she coached him on how to present it and everything else? Like, yeah. what do you think Hillary's involvement is in this? Like, did she give him permission or did he slip as a senile old man? Now, in line with what I was saying, I don't think she had a clue. Like, it was probably <laughs> that, like... That makes this awesome, bro. That was like, <laughs> we, got, we got documentaries like, ooh, documentary. He shows up, <laughs> he's ready, sits down in the chair, he's got his suit on, they ask him his questions and Hillary's out doing Hillary and... That's yeah, how we get this. Just like I was saying, I feel like if he respected her, he would just like stop talking. About right. This. That's stop a great point. That's a great point. Was, I don't think she had a clue. In, like she probably read this article today and like you, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> so funny. All right, guys, you ready for this case? I find it so, so <laughs> hilarious. Okay, let me pull it up so you guys can see what I'm talking about. All right. 
I'm going to read it to you, Andre. Oh, God. You ready? I want you to see. <laughs> Look at this guy on the this screen guy. right now. The Fugitive Task Force is looking for Ronnie Williams Jr. of Cincinnati for fraud. He has convinced three local churches that he is Ed Sheeran and even went as far as performing The Shape of You in front of Christ Community <laughs> Church last Sunday. When the pastor was asked why he believed the real Ed Sheeran would perform for $35 in a sandwich, he said he just assumed that he felt he, he had fell on tough times. If you have any information on Ronnie's whereabouts, message us immediately. Dude, look at this guy that passed his Ed Sheeran. <laughs> Fucking Ed Sheeran that needs food. <laughs> and a sandwich. Like heroin like he chic. needs a sandwich. Heroin chic Ed Sheeran. I feel like if, like, even if you were to Google Ed Sheeran, like, you're just like, oh, like, I love Ed Sheeran. Have you ever heard his music? Yeah, let me Google him. You pull up a f- one picture... <laughs> and you will realize it's not this crackhead. Yeah, but then Ed Sheeran on hard times, though. You don't know. I mean, That's what he said. very, very hard times. Very hard times. I mean, you look at him. And, I mean, Ed hold Sheeran on. has never been on times that hard. But you look at this guy, and if you put him on heroin and, like, 30 pounds lighter, it looks like yeah, this meth head. That's kind of creepy now that you said it. Oh, my gosh. Wow. You put them side the by side, side, side and he looks like the creepy. meth head Ed Sheeran. Except, like, why me being a church... What, who is this, a pastor? Who was yes, yeah. Christ, Christ Community so, Church. Yeah, why would you hire someone that looks like they're on drugs? Uh, he looks more like... Because it's, cause Jesus wants us to help our fellow man. He does, but not with, like, drug dealers. Yeah, I don't know. Like, you know. I'd say he looks more like Rupert Grint gone bad than Sh- Ed Sheeran, so I don't know. Ron Weasley. Yes. And he's Ron he's Weasley. He's definitely a Weasley. He is. A, yo, he's one of the twins. He yeah, looks he's, more he's like the, the older Weasley brother. Uh, one of those General Hux from Star Wars. He went on to go to space. Oh. <laughs> I just find this case so funny because it's like, there is no point Ed Sheeran, the year after being on Game of Thrones, is... Asking for thirty five bucks in a sandwich. <laughs> it's I a feel real like hard time, no, man. No, no person that's in a business. Ed Sheeran's gonna ask you for a sandwich. <laughs> like, I don't think that very like like smaller artists are gonna be like, hey, can you pay me like some money, but like also like a sandwich. Can you just like can you give me some pancakes or something. Like, give me, do you mind giving me a sandwich. box of those uh, those communion wafers? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of that's enough. <laughs> So I feel like that's an obvious. That's Thirty-five dollars in a box of communion wafers, and and do you mind giving me the communion wine too? This is like this <laughs> is a place to sleep. <laughs> Can to I sleep honest, on a pew? To be honest, on this case, I don't even know if I would book him for fraud, because I feel like the people were that stupid to hire this man for thirty-five dollars oh, yeah, in no. a sandwich. Like, is he really being fraudulent, or are you just being stupid? Okay, one, you're being stupid. Yeah. But even furthermore. Is fraud is such? Mo, it, it, you correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't fraud in the basic sense is fraud a felony charge, or is there fraudulent fraud felony like fraudulent felony? It might be a misdemeanor. I'm not sure. Okay, so if he then said- it depends on your dollar amount. Mm-hmm. But thirty five dollars. We're gonna go after somebody for thirty five bucks. That's what I'm saying. So like, the, so the difference is on words. Then, so if he said, no, he did it three Sheeran, times though. You don't know what else he charged the other churches. But if he said, so <laughs> it's the difference between him saying he is Ed Sheeran and him saying I'm an Ed Sheeran impersonator. And that's where he screwed up. Yeah, because he should have like, just said I'm an impersonator. <laughs> so like, what? But then no church. Listen, listen. This meth head guy walks up to you and says he's an impersonator. You you guys you've seen fat people pretending to be Elvis. You've seen people <laughs> impersonators. You've been on the Hollywood Strip where Spider Man can't even like pull his <laughs> shirt over his belly. I I still wouldn't be like no. you say you're an impersonator. I'd be like, dude, the meth ain't here. Go somewhere else. Yeah. Like I'm turning you down. But again, I'm not a church. I would just hope that as a church, especially like. Knowing that they deal with like all sorts of people, you both young and old, would try and like screen the people that come into their facility that they pay for. Right. So I feel like that's that's I feel like that's a problem for these three churches. <laughs> I don't think that like most people would get him confused with Ed Sheeran. Like the, the side by side is like so no, much more like Ron Weasley brother. Like, this I'm is the most that. Cincinnati thing I have ever seen. <laughs> but just like even yeah, if you like Google a recent picture, just a recent one. Yeah, it's Andy Dalton's like disheveled brother. <laughs> 
<laughs> and, Andy Dalton got cut from the Bengals he and he's running on hard week. times. <laughs> He went to the crack. I mean, the sad dog. part is you just look into his eyes and you just see, like, Drugs. you can see it in his face. It's just like, Drugs. man, the funny thing is, is that he duped them into truly believing it. I feel Did like he throw on just, an accent? Like, hello, I'm from the well, like, how sheltered Another were these thing. people? Did he have an accent? How cheap were these people? Well, how sheltered were they? Like, not yeah. even, like... It's Ohio. Did Sharon he walk is? in with the Ohio accent? Like, hello, I am from Ohio. Or from England. With I am needle Sharon. sticking out of his arm, too. Better, yeah. Yes. Like, <laughs> I hope he can, at the very least, play a guitar. Yes. At the very least, I hope I don't even know if he can stand up. Look at this guy. Well, yeah. The funny thing is, is I don't know if they found him or not. This was posted by the city of oh, Cincinnati. Look, you guys, what's his name? DJ. Ronnie? You got to look for Ronnie. Look for Ronnie. So all of my this friends back in Cincy, public service announcement, bring justice to Ronnie. <laughs> Not to Ronnie. <laughs> to the churches. The funny thing is, you know, on a given Sunday, the the plate that they pass around, this it has to be like a sixteenth of what they make on a given plate. Sunday. Like he could have just taken exactly. the plate home. He asked for thirty five bucks. Pocket a little of the plate, you know. <laughs> This was obviously premeditated, so... <laughs> he, he was like, Who do you know, I look I the most look like? like Sheeran, so... Who do so I, I look the like, most <laughs> I'd be like if I tried to, like, double as, like, John Legend. I'd be like, you know... <laughs> but let's be honest. You Maybe. don't look like the crackhead <laughs> John Legend. <laughs> you at least... You're a good-looking guy. Well, that's you're helpful. not... The <laughs> That's a crackhead, John crackhead John Legend. That's nice. Uh, I appreciate that. That but, face is going to stare into my soul. Dude, what's funny is I still got the face up. I, I'm going to have through the whole segment. I'm going to have this face in the corner so they just blow it up on the see right. him looking back at them. Like, it's just a creepy looking he guy. He was ready for this picture. Whatever it was, he was like dead eye shot. I know. He's like, he's just like happy in that photo. He's like, what's I funny did is, my job. This he got is his an, $35 in a sandwich. Oh, well, no, the better part <laughs> is that, the better part is they're looking for Ronnie. So this means this is a this previous is old shot. Yeah, this is like, an old man. He's probably the fucking Ed Sheer in the shit before. <laughs> you know what? Maybe with long hair. Maybe That's he puts it. some weight on. That, that could be it. Just All these sandwiches. He, I was make. about to say, he just needs a couple more sandwiches, and he'd build up his Ed Sheeran look. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'd get to charge like 135 bucks and two oh, sandwiches. Two sandwiches. <laughs> a whole sandwich. Not just the half. I feel like, however, to look on a positive note, if he does get found and jailed or whatever and I'm sure Ed Sheeran doesn't give a fuck about this man but like he could totally be an impersonator especially if granted if he has talent because I, I would hope that they would be like just go up there and sing dude right, just imagine this bro. heroin guy just like I twitch the shape in. of you <laughs> If he's done three charges, I hope like I hope that someone would at least like stop him halfway through the set and be like, "Sir, like I just don't." Well, were, like this <laughs> just take the work. sandwiches, yeah, sit down, please. Fine. They were recording them. They were sending them out as a parish, uh, you know. And, uh, album. I would love they to see like, that. This is our local album, you know. We got Ed Sheeran here. My crew is big and it keeps getting bigger. That's because Jesus Christ is my nigga. And you know what? This is how celebrities are found. Yep. Amen. YouTube. Shout out to churches. Ronnie Williams. I see your, <laughs> I see your future. He's a star. <laughs> I love it. I, the, the face, the eyes, the eyes do it. Right? It's the eyes of a dead man. That's just the before shot. <laughs> All right, last thing. Um, we're gonna wrap up now. Had fun talking about Ronnie, but um, I just got five TikToks I picked here for you, and then we're gonna wrap up with my own. Before we get to the TikTok, though, I did remind myself. So one TikTok that I have is from China. Now, before we get to that TikTok, that TikTok, before we get to that TikTok. Watch this one minute video. It is a video of a screen. It's a coronavirus screen check in China. This is a drill, it seems like. It doesn't seem like an actual person. It seems like a more video. Informational. Like, yes. But this is how China is approaching their coronavirus uh, like traffic stops. Is it just like the thermometer in the mouth? Well, I think they locked them in rooms too. But... No, no, no. But this is just like a traffic stop. It's weird that they have a scanner that, is that like a thermometer. It was some type of sc- maybe so. that is it. it maybe like it's a thermometer. A thermometer. Right. Just checking your heat. Yeah. Okay. So they test that you're you got a high temp. No, they call him the riot shield. <laughs> yeah, I like the riot shield. <laughs> and watch this one cop. He's like, dick. get out! He's the time for you to leave. Get out now! I said to leave the car. <laughs> oh, that guy. And then he, the car tried leaving, and they pull the. Uh, they have like. 
the like tire poppers that they pull across. They bring the van out in front of it. Oh, he's got the mask on too. I said I'm not a sick. I had the no corona. Oh, <laughs> I did have a the rhyme. <laughs> they got the net. Yeah, the net, the net on the face. <laughs> you ain't going anywhere, Corona boy. Yeah, that's what that was. Though. That was definitely a thermometer. <laughs> He's a good. We got him. And then they spray him with stuff. Like what? With Lysol on an ant spray tank. <laughs> <laughs> Weed spray. Wow. Weed spray Lysol. So, uh, anyway. That's we, traumatic. Right? <laughs> like, that was a lot. Dude, the net on the face, the way they yanked yeah. him, I'm like, I hope this is a guy with the coronavirus, That's because how- if this is just an actor and you yanked his neck like that, I'd be pretty ticked. And there like, was Come a, on, guys. And there was a good 10 plus people involved in that one coronavirus. <laughs> yeah. Like, they all have corona now. It doesn't matter. Like, it's like. But you got to remember close. how expendable people are in China. They got more people than they know what to do with. So they were just like, throw 50 people. Um, yes, that's how butterflies feel. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because the butterfly dad. Oh. <laughs> Bro, I'm like, what? <laughs> he wants a lot of butterflies. I thought you meant like a whole bunch of butterflies or hang. I'm like, I was. I agree. Those poor yeah, butterflies. Yeah, fun as a kid, you know, catching those butterflies yeah. on the elephant's trunk. Yeah. That was, yeah. Oh, that was so fun. That was a fun game. <laughs> So, first TikTok of the day, because again, Kayla and I on the last podcast, we talked about the coronavirus, so I thought it was appropriate, especially now that we're all going to die. Um, we, we all got it. So, look at this TikTok. This is an elevator in China. Again, a sentiment to how gross China is, how uncleanly they are, and again, here we go. Disposable toothpicks on deck. And then here's the big invention. And then you light it wow. to kill the germs. Wow. I mean, to be honest, I'm not mad at that because half the time that I touch the pole in the subway, I would rather lay my hand on fire. So. Intuitive. So I'm know. with you on that. I'd <laughs> rather have the lighter situation. Because I was going to carry tissues around. That's more convenient than a tissue, you know? But they have billions of people. Do yeah. you know how many toothpicks I gotta go buy, go through in one elevator? Yeah. As long as they recycle. <laughs> <laughs> you can't recycle. It's, one toothpick has the coronavirus. Yeah, wait till you set off the sprinkler system, you know, like, toothpick burns too long. <laughs> That's true, too. I just think it's so bizarre. Like, again, while you're right, the subway is gross and uncleanly, we don't have that problem. Like, you go on the subway and you still come out unscathed. These people have a true problem. They can't yeah. even take an elevator without dying of palomavirus or something. Like, Paloma. Well, I mean, like, not everybody in China is dying. <laughs> it's it's Dude, only coming for the meek and mild. I can't talk about this enough, but China, they just poop on the sidewalks, man. This is a type of human that's walking is like, yeah, now's the time, and just drops trowel and goes, and then goes, I'm not kidding you. I really Sometimes, you know, the extra special, the, the really clean and high-end Chinaman poops in a trash can. But most of them just do it on the sidewalk. <laughs> I've never heard of that. Dude, my sister there. would tell, when she came back from China, she's like, you'd be amazed the amount of people you'd see with their ass in a trash can or would just walk, stop, do it, and keep walking. <laughs> That's that China, funny. man. China's gross. That's why they got toothpicks just for a button. <laughs> You know, I'm not mad at the toothpicks, honestly. I'm not mad at it's toothpicks. Intuitive. <laughs> it's mad. intuitive. It's intuitive. It is intuitive. Uh, you gotta get it. And it, it had them. enough force to push the button. And it's that. cheaper than tissues. That's fair too. That's a good point. And it, it a toothpick does the job. And it won't dry your hands out like. And you're toothpicks. saving the environment more than a tissue. Every time you throw a tissue away, you know, saving the environment. It's de- like decompostable or whatever it is. Is this some bitch talking about? Who do you know in this building? Hey, Don. Oh God. Hey, uh, hey, hey, listen, uh, hey, you were here uh, last week and you, you let your dog shit on my pavement, the same you just did. You, you uh, need to pick that up. Hold on, hold on. Uh, it's a chihuahua. Okay, I don't care if it's a chihuahua uh, or a fucking oh, Great Dane. Or a when Great Dane. step in it, all right, I got kids in there. When I bring it and step in it and bring it to my house, the kids are rolling around in it. You know what I mean? His logic doesn't fit. Okay, so you need to pick it the fuck up. He's just rolling around the shit. What the hell Listen, is it? Listen, pick it up or knock your junkie boyfriend the fuck out. Dude, wait, 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 wait. Let's take it back. Listen, listen to what he says. 
unwrapping it and stepping it and bringing it to my house, the kids are rolling around in it. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay, so you need to pick it the fuck up. I don't think so. I'm not picking it up. Listen, you're going to pick it up or I'm going to knock your junkie boyfriend the fuck out. Boyfriend has a 20 year You gotta let him talk to me like that? Pick it the I fuck told up. you you should have picked it up. <laughs> like. Wait, 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 wait! No, she goes, I don't have a bag. Up. Pick it the fuck up. <gasps> yup! <laughs> Christmas was over four months ago, asshole. Asshole? So Pennsylvania. Yeah, so it ain't Philly. over. Oh. Asshole. <laughs> No, what the hell this guy's Listen, doing? Like she picked it up shit. with her bare hand, yo. That's not Jeez. the problem. Why is this kid rolling around and shit on a sidewalk? <laughs> That's the, he should he should get some help. Okay, okay. One, his logic I don't agree with. His reasoning was pick up your shit so I don't step in it and my kids roll around in it. Okay, that's not the reason, but I definitely support pick up your dog's yeah. shit. But he ain't any better, like, this guy ain't like... Right, again, well, his let's reason... Say, let's say he has, like, young kids that are, like, right. four or five. No, they're 14. Or whatever. Yeah, how would you know? He's, like, playing around with whatever. Like, I, like... I would have a fucking problem. I never rolled on a sidewalk yes, as a that's child. The point. That's the yeah, point. That's the point. His reasoning is off, but that's a moot point. Especially if you knew it was the same woman. Like, this is not the spot. So and I love when like, she goes, it's a chihuahua. Yeah. And he goes, I don't care if it's a great Dane. You know, I respect him for saying, I'll, I'll beat your boyfriend up. Yeah, I love that. Dumbass. Junkie boyfriend. <laughs> and he was like, I love the junkie boyfriend. I, I told you to pick it up. <laughs> I have another <laughs> side note, dead. side question, relatively unrelated to this, but what the hell happened to TikTok being about music and shit? Like, what is this? No, no TikTok this is, like is the new Vine. Online. It's yeah, the Vine. Like Vine or something. Yeah. I don't it's know literally it's Vine. You can do... Because it was about music at one point, as far as I remember. Well, it used to be called Music Cali, and it was like, you could either do dance, like, they have music, or you could do, like I used to do, over. voiceover. And that's just But now videos. they got a ton of videos, too. Um, that. you know, we're turning the end I, of... I'm used to the memes. They have, like, the goofy music. Like, that's where that, like, one popular uh, country song or whatever came from. The Old Town Road. The Old yes. Town Road. So that's what I would thought it was like, but I guess it changed a lot since then. Well, no, exactly. It's evolved in this. and Z. That's it. That's it. Plus, I, you know, I think there is a, a craving for what Vine gave us. It was this <laughs> short media style to get Well, those were six content. seconds. That was a lot longer than that. So well, the like, max is a minute. All right. But any, anyway, okay, so which one do we want to end oh, on? Dude. This is hilarious. <laughs> Lizzo, Lizzo fell off her jet ski oh, and couldn't Lizzo. get off, get out of the freaking water. So again, on the podcast, there's been criticism and whatever, but we've had plenty of conversations of this Shoot. big giant human and how she thinks her lifestyle <laughs> is healthy and appropriate, and yet... I've always said, as somebody who struggles with their weight, that this is not something to encourage and be excited about. Because I think like you, dude, when I see what you're able to do on, again, check out Andre, creating Andre on Instagram. He's got an awesome yoga setup. Honestly, you would never be more amazed that in, until you go and see what this man is able to do. And you've worked for that. You did gymnastics. For, so for me, I look at, we on the drive here, we had a little quick talk be right before I called Andre about Mike Tyson. The thing that makes people, the things that LeBron James, Michael Jordan, what makes some of the greats amazing is the fact that you're able to, what they're doing is not easy. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of work mm -hmm. and a lot of commitment. And so, I don't, bro, I really didn't want to bring it into this podcast. It'll be in the next one, but I'm going to quickly mention it. A girl that I went to college with was so proud of herself because she posted on her Instagram page, on her story, she bought these new cards, like business cards, mm -hmm. that she takes to her to every doctor's appointment. Again, I'm not going to get into the details of this card because I want to talk about it in a future podcast, but the card literally says, do not weigh me unless it is beyond medically necessary because it brings me anxiety. And this is a girl that what? when we met her was the tall, skinny girl, uh -huh. but she was around lazy liberals that say fat is awesome and blah, blah, blah. 
Now she is the biggest slug. That's not you why could've... she became. That's not why she became. I know. Well, listen, she <laughs> definitely got pulled into this lazy ass culture because yes. I was dating one of the girls that were friends with all of them, mm -hmm. and she even said I noticed it. Like it was card? this group. No, no, no. The card is a, just an ale, you know, an anecdote that came along with it. Say, but I think her. Podcast. I think her thought process mm -hmm. of like. You can't tell me I'm fat and, f you know, this body image stuff that you put on me, yes, like, so I should be, like, no, 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 yes. this isn't healthy. Have you seen um, Julianne Michaels talk Dude, about Dude, we've talked story? about that. Okay. And what did she say besides, I like, I just... I never comment on Instagram. I never, like, do those, like, Instagram arguments, even though I think that they're hilarious to read into. However, because people were coming for Jillian Michaels on her saying that, like, Lizzo, like, thank you. She was saying, like, Lizzo is great. Love her music, love her as a person. However, to purport that she is, like, this, like, healthy and this like, is something just, to strive like, for. Yeah, like, this, like, how, like, yes, like, we all love, like, body love and, like, everybody should love themselves. Like, that's great. However, to say that, like, that is, like, healthy or, like, like, okay. Boom. It is okay in the sense to where, like, if you are that big, like, love yourself. Yes. While knowing that, that you, it's not good. While knowing that you should be taking steps to make yourself healthier. Or, so I completely agree with Jillian Michaels. People were coming for her about that. I just was like, you know what? She's a health professional. She's seeing someone that looks like, just based off the people that she's seen on her shows, based off the people that she trains, she has an expertise that like the average person does not have to be like, this person is susceptible to diabetes in both. three years, six years, whatever. So she knows, based off of how this body's built based off of all like the fat and adipose tissue and all that stuff that like you do not carry weight in a healthy place to support a healthy lifestyle. A hundred percent. So it's like one thing to be creative. It's one thing to be artistic and that's awesome. But like being comfortable with who you are is different than... Than projecting this is a good thing. Yeah. Listen, I have no problem with you looking like this. I have no pro I am not some proponent of we need to make concentration camps of fat people and put them yeah. in a fat camp and everybody needs to be skinny. Yeah, I don't care if you're fat. Coach. But uh, yeah, I don't care if you're fat. Mm -hmm. And I really don't care if you don't want to change. The main thing is don't fight to put in a society that tells my kids and my neighbors that you're good or better than anything else. Yes. Because what really stinks in the Jillian Michaels situation is here's a self-made woman that has worked her ass off to build a brand and her entire career is built around health. And she was previously very heavy herself. Yes. She was very overweight herself. And so is this person supposed to be crippled and playing in this charade that everything's... No, no, no. Her life career is saying this is tough and this isn't an easy thing, but this is something we all need to work for. Again, as a heavy set guy that's battling their weight issues because I love food too much and exercise is a pain, but it's a... It, it's an exercise, it's, it's a chore for a reason. It, it, if not, everybody would be skinny. Mm. And so it is interesting where we got these girls now that are taking car, because the doc, if anybody should know your weight, because the, if it gives you an anxiety when the doctor goes, this isn't healthy, it's gonna hurt your heart and yeah. death will come. Who the hell are you to tell me that I'm, the doctor's not allowed to say no. death is on the yeah, rise? That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Yeah, like, but, being a medical professional, like. You should have that information to make proper diagnosis. Because, like, how are you going to be like, yeah, we'll, we'll do everything this time except for your blood pressure. I'm sure you're fine. Exa Boom. It's like, no, like, everything matters. Everything is, like, makes you who you are. So, like, let's look at everything so we could actually get, like, an accurate diagnosis. So to, like, look at some things and just, like, ignore things because they make you uncomfortable, like, is not how you're going to get something that's actually going to be helpful. So, like, if you're just going to a doctor for a play and it's going to get your tonsils checked and whatever, like, I don't know, like, whatever they do, cool. But, like, I think that to bring a card to a medical professional... Means you're when, mentally Especially when they're a general broken. doctor, like, I don't know, I don't know, like, I've never been to a gynecologist, so I don't know. But I feel like, does a gynecologist need to, need to know... How heavy you are. I don't know. Doesn't I don't, yeah, I don't like know it. enough about it. They very well might. But I got to imagine that's that. affecting your circular. There's a lot. Something. And how about this one, Andre? I want to hammer your point home even further. So we talk about universal health care and how everybody should get free health care. 80% of expenses in medicine in America are fat related. They're obese related. Mm -hmm. So when we go universal health care... 20% of that goes to 
you know, health pro- heart mm-hmm. problems, you know, uh, cancer, all these, all these other things, mm-hmm. that's 20%. 80% of it is you just couldn't put the Big Mac down. Well, what's crazy is that you're actually mentioning that because, like, I've been obsessed with watching my 600-pound life recently. Yo, that's interesting. And it's so interesting to see, like, these people completely, like, obviously, like, something happened to them and that's why they're this big, blah, 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 blah. But, like, very functional people up into a certain point where, like, they're just too big to work. And once they become too big to work, then they get on food stamps and then it's like the government's taking care of them. So then it's like, okay... I'm being taken care of. I don't need to work. So then it's kind of just like, where is that like middle ground? Is like, this is a problem that needs to be solved. And like, you should like, this is not the default for your situation. This is like, a, a, like a reality check to being like, oh my God, like I can't move myself to like work a five hours. Like I can't move myself to work at a salon, work at McDonald's, like whatever they were working at. Can I even function enough to just like get a paycheck? Right. To be able to like, still like That's eat, a problem. eat whatever bad food, like, then you're just literally just like relying on the system to take care of you because you're too big. Not because, not because like you're mentally handicapped, not because like you were actually poor. These are people that have fine living situations. Obviously some of them like don't live in the, like, the best living situation because like they're weight and stuff like that. But like these are people that weren't just like born poor. These aren't people in like the Appalachia Mountains and blah, 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 like brushing their teeth and Mountain do this. Like <laughs> not that type of person. So it's like for a person that has like a family... And has, like, some sort of just, like, real, like, foundation to just be like, you know what, like, I'm just too big now, so I can't go to work, so I need the government to support me. That's a problem. And I want to, I think another problem, parallel to that, is I meant to, so, again, go back and see the the podcast with Carolyn Roblin. We actually did a thing on the Jillian Michaels. (laughs) And um, what, I I did make a comment, and, and what's crazy is it has come out recently. I made the comment... I compared Lizzo to Adele. It was interesting. Adele was a heavier set girl. Yeah, she's mm-hmm. popping but out the baby. Hold on, though. hold on. But you, it would be a, you society would come after you if you said anything about Adele's weight. Because again, Adele is a she has a superior voice among most. She has this this voice that just resonates above most of the people in our society. She is a legend in in the music industry. But she didn't define her career by her weight. And Lizzo is the fat person. She's coming to f- battle for fat people. She's saying fat is good. And so I said the dichotomy here is you'd be a bad person if you brought up Adele's weight because she's trying to – she separates herself from the physical realm. She is – I am here to do music. My message isn't fat is awesome and everybody should be fat. Yeah. And, and she's like I'm trying to be pretty in my own body and I'm dealing with my own issues – but I'm not making that my narrative. Where yeah. Lizzo's narrative is, this is awesome, and I only want to get fatter. And and, and she. I don't. I don't know. I'm not okay. So I do agree with you as far as like Lizzo being like very okay with herself and be like not. She's not pressed. She anyway. definitely projects she's, it, man. She I, I thinks what think, she's doing is awesome. I don't think, at least like from the different like interviews that I heard with her, that she's saying like, yes, like we should all be this big. Like I love being this big. Like you would love being this big. Like she, like I don't think that she's doing that. I think that she's very okay with herself and being like, if you are my size, like you should be okay with it. Which is like, but should you? That's the thing. It's like a you double sword. But however, what I will say about her versus Adele is Adele is a singer. She's a performer. In the fact that, like, she stands there, she wears her, like, knee-length dress, and will always just be, like, doing her thing. Very talented, doesn't need anything else besides that. She, Lizzo, on the other yeah. hand, shows up to, like, basketball games and butt ass naked. Boom. And just, like, ass cheeks out. And it's disgusting. And, but the thing is, like, and I'm done if, pretending it's it not. It would be different, and I would feel differently if that was the culture. If she was at fucking carnival and you had your ass out, bitch, shout out to you. Like, <laughs> love that for you, but, it's, like, Nobody else at the game has their cheeks sitting on the seat like you. So Even like, the girl that's 120 pounds yeah, has her so clothes on. Yeah, so like, why, like, why are you trying to get that much attention? Where, like, you already know, like, you're already a celebrity. You're already a little bit bigger than the average celebrity. Let's get naked. Like, how does that, like, mesh to be like, oh, yeah, this is, like, a good image for me. Like, this is what I want to say. Right. Like, just go to, the, go to the game. Sit in front row and, like, look cute. That's all you have to do. That's all you have to do. See, I don't know much about Lizzo because I don't really pay attention to, like, modern, like, uh, pop music and stuff like that. But the Adele thing, like, that's, like, actually, like, what she did. Like, I think it's, like, marketing genius. Like, she, like, literally releases yes. this album. It's, like, a trend-setting album. Like, it's big. It's huge. 
she has the baby goes on retire or goes on like sabbatical or whatever and then repeats the process like she, i think it's like actually like she has money in mind she has family in mind whereas like i don't know much about lizzo but it sounds like she doesn't actually know what she's doing it's more of popularity whatever yeah like it sounds like adele planned out what she's doing but even she's more smart. so i want to say i only brought up adele again because literally like a week ago i'm gonna put the picture on the screen here adele lost like a hundred pounds mm -hmm. she literally looks she looks gorgeous oh, yeah. but she, she looks amazing and to take away from what she was able to accomplish, guess what? I'm going to get out of law school. I'm going to have time to work on myself. And when I finally drop the weight that law school has put on me, Hello. I want people to go, it, it took work. Mm -hmm. It takes work. And so when you look at Adele and you go, wow, look what you accomplished. And then on the opposite side of the spectrum, you've got somebody that's trying to say that isn't an accomplishment and we should all be comfortable. Like, no, no, no. The reason you're uncomfortable is because it's supposed to provoke you to want change and to work for something. You you don't want to work, and it shows because guess what? I I learned Brendan Schaub. He, he was in the UFC and he's a stand-up comedian. He always says, "If you aren't losing weight today, you've gained weight." And so that is how your body works. In a given day, you've either burned more fat than you consumed, or calories than you've consumed, or you've consumed more calories than you burned. And that's just how it works. So if you live in a world where this is great and you're never going to stop me to put down the donut, well, then you're only going to exacerbate mm -hmm. and get bigger. And then it gets to Andre's point. You know, I would, I, when we were with Caroline, again, I don't want to go down a whole Lizzo. Lizzo I just want to laugh well, at Liz her. I want to laugh at her expense all <laughs> day. I don't want to go down the Liz <laughs> hole. But it is funny. Um, you, you, oh, man, now I, the Liz hole totally distracted me. <laughs> Um, but I don't feel like Adele had to lose. Like, it's great that she lost the weight. Did I? Was she it, she to, needed right? to. Like, no, she no, was. No, she did. So, like, I view Adele more of as like a mom than a fat person. Yeah. So, like, sure. she's more of a person. She's like a motherly but before figure. Before her kids, she, she was, was known as a big girl. Yeah. Too. But it was shortly. Like, she like it was like one album, and then she went to the motherly whatever figure. Okay. Know, nobody really cared about her having kids. At least I didn't care right. about her. I, I, I don't really remember, remember her before kinda, the kids, so I guess that's was, my perspective. I don't. For me, Adele has just like never been small. I haven't even seen like the recent right. pictures of Thank her. Thank you. Oh, I, I can pull but it up for us. Um, Lizzo, I don't think that she makes. She's trying to make it okay, and she's trying to make it acceptable for people. But what she needs to realize is like that can also have dangerous connotations. Bro, look how because, pretty like, she is. Because oh and God, and yes, that come ball. on. However, but I will. What I will say is, like Lizzo, if you've ever seen her perform, she moves. Oh, that's what I was like. She's say. extremely very active. Yeah, so, like, whatever she's doing to eat is obviously detrimental. Thank so, you. Like that's where she's getting it. She's not getting it because she's not active. Because she could obviously move. She could blow a flute and do all this stuff, and then still dance and like not be completely out of breath. However, she's doing herself a disservice by choosing to then not eat to support the healthy lifestyle Boom. that she. Like, I'm not, I don't want to say should be living, but like being a performer, like you need to be with it. You need to be like your cardio needs to be on it, better, <laughs> way better than mine. Like you need to be able to perform, sing, dance, walk up steps, heels, all that stuff. So like, she's not setting herself up for success in that way. Well, I also want to question because uh, we brought this up with Caroline as well. <laughs> I'm also curious. Again, comparing to Adele, Adele was a singer, and her physicality came second. Lizzo's brand is so fat girl, embrace your fatness that I got to believe now that she's been shoved down her throat so much and she's become this, she's the one of the biggest stars right now. She's the new Cardi B. She's going to have a national tour that hits every city. She's going to hit, she's going to perform every week in a new city, two hours long. Do you know how much cow, like how much you burn, like you were saying in one of those concerts? The real question is, but Adele, she's someone that's like, if I lose weight, it's a great thing. Or, you know, it's an, it isn't a problem for me. It has nothing to do with my brand. I got to believe Lizzo, after her concert, has, has to eat brand. 10 Big Macs just to stay fat because she's the fat bitch that gets to, like, 
It's so much her brand. That's the disgusting part is her that. brand is disgustingly fat. So now, oh God, I burned too many calories in Houston. So <laughs> bring me a thousand wings so I can keep this disgusting. The, the, the thing that kills me, and Andre, I know we've had this talk. Mm. This is why I'll never stand against a gay person or something. We've had this talk. I can never change how I feel about a, a girl. And if that's how a guy feels about another guy, then who am I to stand in between that? Because it's my nature. My nature says this. The disgusting thing is when this girl who gets a card that says, stop weighing me at the doctor because it gives me anxiety because I love being fat. You cannot take out of my nature that when I see you, I'm disgusted. I'm not even just like kind of turned on. I am disgusted and and. To that point, all I'm trying to say is you're fighting nature. I didn't choose Listen, to be disgusted. Some people are chubby chasers. That's so it. Like, so you might not be, but like, there is a faction of society that's like, get big, bitch. Like, get exactly. Big, and get I big want big you as big head. as you can. Exactly. But they're a very small minority. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to hate them for loving fat people, but who are you mm-hmm. to hate me for wanting a skinny girl? And it's I think it's interesting that we have this conversation because like out of like – how many skinny scar- stars do we have? All of them. All of them. Lizzo's like the one. Do you know how many big Americans we have? <laughs> All of them. <laughs> so it's like literally like if anything, she's just it's like, because that's what we she's want. Speaking we sh- towards like it's supposed to be like aspirational, but like maybe she's just like real. So like that's obviously true. she's getting a check to like keep this sort of like up, and I completely agree with you to where it's like this is kind of like her brand is to be like the big girl. Does she have to be this big to be the big girl? No. But what you makes know? LeBron LeBron? He is a billionaire. He is the top of one of the biggest sports in the world. Mm -hmm. What makes us all turn on the television and ooh and ah over LeBron James is the fact that none of us are a LeBron James. So everybody that we put on a pedestal in Hollywood and in music and everything is skinny because it isn't easy to look like that. And that's what... That's what makes it unique. The uniqueness is the fact that we're all going through the McDonald's drive-thru and all you're eating is kale salads to look the way you do. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us, even when we get skinny, we still don't look like, name her, you know, whoever it is. Pick your fit. You're not going to look like Selena Gomez even when you drop the 50 pounds. So I think that that's why she's found her niche, though. That's it. She gets to appeal to the Well, she gets to speak to the girl that gets anxiety getting on a scale. She gets that niche specifically because she is as talented as she is. So the door is open with her talent, but how she has her foot standing there is with her appearance and with the platform that she's using. So, like, I'm not trying to discount her talent, but I do think that her, like, her, what makes her unique, like her corner, is her being the whole like that, big and, girl and that's and why she whole, can't lose weight. Yeah. She's got to stay unhealthily obese. But again, we got sidetracked. I want you guys to see this woman struggle. This speaks to why this isn't what we should have all of like. Yes, all Americans are fat and eating McDonald's, but this is why this probably isn't the best thing. If you can't get back on the jet ski or out of the water. <laughs> This is probably the most exercise she's had. Bro, when you're pulling yourself, like, are you not embarrassed? I'm embarrassed I'm sure for I'm, you. Like, that's like, I don't want. God, I hope she I don't, is. I don't want this to come off as like we're like attacking her for a week because right. like I like I'm sure she is embarrassed and like that. I'm embarrassed that, of myself. What the thing is, but however, just think about it because like she can't feel good knowing that she's embarrassed. She can't feel good. However, knowing that she is getting this money and getting this attention because she is as big as she is, what is she supposed to do then? Boom. Lose weight because like oh because we're like oh she must be embarrassed or, like. She's making money Boom. off of this and everything else that she's doing. That's why it's hard to find empathy. I come off so crass and callous, but it's because you are making millions. You are making more in one concert than somebody makes in their entire lifespan, in a lot of Americans. And it's because you're living this unhealthy lifestyle and you're projecting it to be a good thing. That's the you problem. You could say the same thing. You, 
just to play devil's advocate, you could say the same thing about someone with an eating disorder. I was about to say, a secure, a Victoria's Secret model. super skinny, like, you're super, like, you're trying to, like, purport this lifestyle of being, like, super That's skinny. That's a fantastic You know, point. you're walking on the runway, and, like, this is, like, I only have, like, two chips and, like, some lettuce a day, like. But now I want to, uh, just one last analogy. Selena Gomez, and who's her friend that, like, tried killing herself Demi all the Lovato. time? Demi Lovato. Demi Lovato. Here are two girls that have struggled with their weight. Mm-hmm. Look at where they're at right now. Yeah. Right? Selena's a little thicker. Demi is definitely, she is fighting her eating disorder. Mm -hmm. And as where she's at right now, she thinks she's, she says she's conquered it to some degree. They look gorgeous. Yeah, no, no, no worries. Um, Here, Zach, I'll talk with you. But they look gorgeous where they're at right now. So that's the struggle is you've got these two girls that, so I agree with Andre when he says the Victoria's Secret models, that's not a healthy thing either. When you're starving yourself for a month to have one slice of pizza after the, the fashion show, I agree. That's not something to put on a pedestal either. We do, but also that's not the girl that I'm dreaming over. The girl of my dreams is Selena, who is plenty thick right now. Or Demi Lovato is getting praise all over the internet. And it's because she's gotten thicker and she's embracing her weight and everything. That's the healthy embracement. Embrace being just a little thicker and being healthy weighted. Don't be anorexic, puke or bulimic, puking in a bathroom, whatever it is. That's an extreme, but also being a thousand pounds and refusing to lose weight for fear of losing your brand and your career. That's unhealthy too. There's a happy medium. Have a burger every once in a while, but run, baby. Like go for a run. You know. Balance. Exactly. It's a balance. Um, but again, it's an interesting situation. But uh, Andre, we're going to keep moving here to get this thing wrapped up so I can we can continue the festivities. <laughs> Dang it. Um, darn, darn. What's this Jimmy Lovato is like, I just heard what you were saying. She's like, if you can still wear crop tops and have a flat stomach, like you're like, I know she's like thick, but like she's not thick. <laughs> right, no, 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 but that's the like, healthy balance, yeah. right? Is you want, all of us are trying yeah, to be you skinny. Can, you can be heavier than that and still be healthy. I but agree. Like, she needs to be thinner because she still needs to wear like the cute crop tops and like she's, she needs to be what people want to be because she is the star that she is. But even now, she is thicker than when she had her eating disorder. So I mean, again, that, so, that plays you know? to your point of the extremes. Mm-hmm. Like you don't want to be that unhealthy bulimic extreme yeah. either. Yeah. So it's a balance. Um, again, if you can't get back on a jet ski or you can't get out of the water, like if you are stuck there, what if they like, bro, we've had one president that up. couldn't get out of a bathtub. That's what you were. That's you were remember. you were a Truman. You were a Truman <laughs> stuck in a bathtub. We needed to get oh, was it Taft? Taft Sorry. Or Howard. <laughs> we needed to get a crane to get you That's out of the ocean. You get on a raft with half. That was the other thing. Oh, the raft. Oh, All right, this is just one funny one that made me laugh. Uh, I hope it makes you guys laugh too. Oh yikes! <laughs> She's talented. <laughs> the face. She looks disturbed, <laughs> but yet she. What it is on this? She sounds more like a duck than that toy did. Yeah. And she looks constipated or something. Yeah, she the face that comes with it. She's taking a poop. <laughs> Look at that. That's face of a poop. All right, last one. Oh, and then, okay, this one cracks me up. This poor old lady. You just had something in your hair. Can I just brush it off for you real quick? Yeah. It's like at the top right here. I used to use. Yeah, you had him in your hair. I didn't even feel him. Well, that's you weird. Serious? He's just sitting up there. Look at her face, bro. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> I'm dead. She just had I love her response. Returns. I didn't even feel him. Yeah. <laughs> the face kills me. All right, laughing up, wrapping up with one last TikTok. Um, this is a. T- did, it, did we do five? I think we did this one. Yeah, it's Lizzo not getting out of the tub. All right, um, and then this is one that I just made the other day. This is to incentivize you to go find me on TikTok. 
Hey, Bill, sorry to bug you. Just got a quick question for you. So with the chili cook-off in the office on Friday, um, I know that we are only limited to beef and veggie options, but I did hear that you're allowing Nick to bring in his venison chili. So I was curious, because you're making that exception, if you'd be willing to allow me to bring in my bird chili. <laughs> uh, well, what do you mean? Like chicken? <laughs> I could see how you would make the mistake. No, no, not necessarily chicken. It, 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 it isn't chicken per se, but let's be honest, I'm sure it'll taste probably just like chicken. Hey, didn't your parakeet just die? <laughs> Sh shut up, Sharon! Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, alright, well, wrap it up. Again, find me on TikTok. Um, guys, thank you. Andre, thank you again for hosting us in D.C. I'm so excited. I'm gonna live my 8th grade dream <laughs> and be a little monument tourist for the weekend. And we're going to see the XFL. Zach and I and Andre are going to see the XFL, the DC Defenders. Yes. I'm going to con Andre into using my, I'm going to give him my Buckeyes helmet and we're going to get two Cardale Jones Featuring autographs. the coronavirus will probably be there too. Featuring the coronavirus. Yeah. Hopefully Trump coughs on Zach. It'll all be amazing. But again, please guys, share this video if you enjoyed it, if you had fun. Find us on Facebook, like the Rethink Tank Facebook page. Follow us on Twitter with the Rethink Tank Twitter page. And again, Thank you for watching, and please share this video. Andre, thank you for joining me. All right, thank you. Zach, thank you. Yeah, thank and you guys, <laughs> we'll catch you next time. Peace.